everybody. So we are going to do a Dutch pour this morning. This is, um, I don't even remember what size canvas this is. This is a, a 20 by 24 canvas. Um, it was a Dutch pour. I don't like the way it dried. There's some separation and some breaking. And I really just don't like the pattern itself. Um, so I'm going to pour over it. I know there's, there's been quite a few questions. If you can pour over a canvas that you've used, the answer is yes, you can. Um, if it has silicone in it, or if you had silicone in your paints, make sure that you clean your canvas really well. There was no silicone in this. Um, and so we're just going to pour over the straight over the top of it. I have not done a top coat or anything. This is just a, um, a raw dried canvas that we're going to pour over. So, um, our colors today are, um, our flood color is actually going to be, and it's not gonna really going to be a flood, but it's going to be this deco art matte metallics, soft silver. And this stuff is super thick. So, um, normally my Dutch pours are a four to one ratio. This one is a true four to one, but I did add some water to it. So, um, if you can see how thick this paint is, it just, it's probably some of the thickest paint I've ever used. Um, it's kind of like molasses. So I did have to add some water to thin it out a bit just to get movement. Um, but this one was, uh, 10 ounces of pouring medium, two ounces of paint and 0.5 ounces of water to, to thin it out and give us a good consistency. It's still a little bit thicker than I would normally like for a Dutch pour, but if you add too much water into it or you cut back on your paint too much, that's where you get the separation and the breaking and the pigment separating. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, this color is this beautiful Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Mink Pearl. Um, this one was uh, four ounces of pouring medium, one ounce of paint, no water. Our gold, and I'm looking around for my stuff. I think I put it away. I don't know why I keep putting them away before I tell you all the colors. Um, the Deco Art Americana Outdoor Living Gold, four ounces of pouring medium, one ounce of paint. This beautiful um, kind of a brick red, dark red color we have here. It's four ounces of pouring medium, 0.8 ounces of the traditional burnt sienna by DecoArt, and then um, 0.2 ounces of the DecoArt Media Fluid, Fluid Acrylics Primary Magenta. This color is our wildflower, so Americana Outdoor Living Wildflower, four ounces of pouring medium one ounce of paint and then this um kind of a orangish red color four ounces of pouring medium 0.5 ounces sorry 0.4 ounces of cadmium orange hue and 0.6 ounces of the primary magenta remember i measure all of my paints as i'm um getting everything ready that way i can recreate all of the colors Helps with consistency. Link is down in the description. I get them for about eight bucks on Amazon. I have quite a few of them because I actually use them in my painting class um, where everybody uh, mixes their own paints and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I give them a little chart with how much, what the ratios are for what they're doing and they mix all of their own paints. I check all their consistencies, make sure it's fully um, stirred up and all that kind of stuff, but I, I try and have them do everything themselves. Had to get some coffee. This is my new coffee mug that I got at Six Flags. Um, I'm a coffee mug person. Um, I'm always getting new ones. I actually have um, a work one, a Guided by Faith Designs one that I designed. Um, as you know, I've been into sublimation. And I have a couple. Um, this is a really, really simple one I did. I run in the path of your commands. You have set my heart free. So that's just a really simple one I did. I made this one. It's called Rockin' the Dog Mom, Mom Life um, that I made. And let's see. I've got a couple of big ones. So these are 17 ounces. This one's the I Believe mug. 
And then I have this one, um, the Lord is near to all who call out to him. So I'm going to start doing videos on sublimation. Might not be something y'all are interested in, but um, who knows? Um, but there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with sublimation. Coffee mugs and all of that. Um, here's another one I'm really excited about. This is actually one of my paintings that I was able to put onto a coffee mug. So possibilities are endless. We'll get into that later. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started on this. We are actually going to do puddle pours all over the place. And then we're going to use the silver to kind of fill them in and then move everything around and see what we get. All right, let's get started. Thank you. 
All right, I'm going to stop messing with it. Um, that silver is so thick. It's way too thick to use as a... Um, as the base that you kind of want to use to move your paint, excuse me, move your paint around. It's just way too thick. So, but I don't want to thin it out too much more because then, um, it might cracks, but we were able to get enough movement to cover the canvas, but this canvas is actually going to be the perfect base to put a Thanksgiving vinyl on. So once it Hi everybody. Welcome back. So, uh, the painting is all dried and it did crack, which I thought it was going to. That silver is just so thick. Um, as you remember, it was really hard to move. And, um, so of course we did get some cracking because it was just so thick, but the cracking actually looks okay. And there's not a whole lot of it. There's a little spot right here and there's a little bit right here, but, um, it's really, really not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I do want to put a vinyl on this. Um, I ended up, this has been probably about two and a half, three weeks since we've done this painting. Um, and this entire time I've been trying to figure out what to put on top of it. And I finally found what I wanted. It got it designed. I had to, I had to build it. And it's um, actually out in the studio right now. I just got it cut in the vinyl. It's going to be black. And we're going to do a tree coming up with the fall autumn leaves coming out of it with some birds and it's going to say um, autumn is God's way of showing change can be beautiful or, or something to that effect so it's going to be really beautiful once we, it's done with this fall background but because of the cracking we are actually going to have to resin this to get a nice smooth surface if we tried to put a vinyl over this cracking you would see all of the dips and all that kind of stuff in the vinyl. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a full coat of resin on this one. Um, I did seal it so it does have one spray of the Krylon spray lacquer like I always use to seal the painting or to seal the paint and then we are going to resin it. So we are using, um, this is the Envirotex Light resin. I get it at Michael's. Um, this kit here, full gallon, is, um, normally like $99 at Michael's, but I waited until they had a 60% off coupon, and then I got it then. So, I got a, a lot cheaper than, uh, what you would normally get it for, so. Um, we are using these cups. I like using the, the ones with the lines on them. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. It is by volume, not by weight. So for something this size, um, we are actually going to probably come up to this top line, maybe a little bit below it, um, to make sure we get a good coverage. When you put your resin on, if you try and spread it out and make it too thin, one, it might cure incorrectly, and two, you might get some divots and dimples where it kind of separates, even though we didn't use silicone, but we want to make sure we have a nice coat of thicker resin because we want it to self level into these kind of crevices and give us a nice flat surface. We do have our big cup that we are going to put it all in. I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. Always use gloves when you're working with resin. Make sure you follow all the manufacturer's uh, safety precautions. All right. Alright, oh, son of a gun, well, 
and you're going to be uneven. See if I can save some of that. Now I'm just making a mess. Ooh, I think I got almost all of it though. Okay. But I am gonna have to start a new cup because uh, that is all over the sides and now I can't be sure that our mixtures are the same level. Problem solved, and we're going to put all the excess back into the bottle. Okay, let's try this again without spilling stuff everywhere. It is extremely important that you make sure that your levels are correct and that you do have a true one-to-one -one by volume, not by weight ratio. Um, okay. I pour both of them in at the same time. If you have too much uh, resin and not enough hardener, when your resin cures, it's gonna it's gonna cure uh, tacky and sticky, and not fully cure. If you have too much hardener and not enough resin, then it is going to cure uneven and it's not going to self level correctly. So it's extremely important that you have the correct mixture ratios when you're using resin. Make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup, get it all. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna mix it up, making sure you turn it over. See right now it's really cloudy. I don't know if y'all can see that, it's really cloudy right now. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna stir until it is clear. Once it all clears up, I use what's called the two cup method. I will actually take this resin and I'll pour, pour it into a fresh cup. Again, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottoms. One of the reasons you wanna do this is because even though you really mix it up well, you actually might have some that's on the bottom of your cup that's not mixed. And resin that is not fully mixed will again, it will dry tacky and sticky. And so you wanna make sure that you always basically flip your cup so you can make sure that the bottom is also fully mixed. If you do have a, a painting or a resin job that dries sticky and tacky, just do another coat of resin on it. Resin is chemically designed to re-adhere to itself. Okay, now that's nice and clear, even though we have bubbles is very clear and now you know it's ready to use. Pour a little off to the side. I have another job off to the side that I need a little bit of resin for. So I'm gonna put that over here. All right. Let's hope I mixed enough. I might have to use that resin. I might not have made enough. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get this resin. I start with a frame and then I go to the middle and smooth it all out.
All right, we have it all coated. What we are gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna hit it with the uh, blowtorch to pop all of these bubbles. Sorry, saw a gnat. I tried to fry him so he didn't land on my painting. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and let this cure. Um, Envirotex resin is normally cured, um, dried enough to the touch after about 10 to 12 hours. Um, it's fully cured after 40, 48. But um, again, if you have something that's curing tacky, you can actually re-pour it. Um, as soon as it starts tacking up, you can, you can put another coat of resin on it and it will all bind itself together. Um, I normally wait 24 hours before we put our vinyl on top. So we are going to let this sit and let this cure. And then when we come back, we are going to put our autumn vinyl on it. And then we'll put our second coat of resin to seal it all together. See y'all soon. Hi, everybody. We are back. Um, the resin is fully cured. So this is 24 hours later. Uh, the resin is fully cured. It actually cured very, very well with no uh, bubbles or anything like that. So it's a nice, smooth uh, finish. So here is the vinyl that we are gonna put on it. So trees and we got some birds and then the autumn is gonna go right here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this trimmed up. So transferring vinyl onto resin um, is actually very, very easy. The vinyl goes on um, quickly. You don't have to fight it or anything like that because resin is such a good surface to put vinyl on. The thing you do have to be careful of is your placement because once this adhesive touches this resin, it's not going anywhere. So just be very, very careful um, when you're applying it. And grab my cutting board over here. Okay. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to take our transfer paper, which is right here. And that fits perfectly. So if you order any vinyls from me, um, they will actually come already on the transfer paper and ready to go so you don't have to do this process. And uh, this painting is 20 by 24. And because my Cricut Maker only prints 12 by 24, we had to break it up and cut it in sections and then we will rebuild it on the canvas.
one down, a few to go. Hi, Kiba. I will be right back. Kiba just got back from his morning walk with his daddy, and he deserves his cookie. Be right back. Okay. He has his cookie and a empty jar of peanut butter. So we are going to put on the next piece. it is all finished so the next step is we are actually going to put another coat of resin on this and seal all this vinyl in so I'm gonna get everything set up and we will be back to put the resin on see y'all soon all right everybody we are back we're gonna go ahead and put our final coat of resin on this um, we are using the same ratio as we did last time it's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio it's by volume, not by weight. And we're using the same Envirotex light. Sorry, Envirotex light. I get mine at um, Michael's. So this is the same resin we put on the first coat. And if you are going to use resin, um, the top and the bottom, I would suggest using the same resin um, on the top and on the bottom. I wouldn't mix resins. All right, now that we have everything mixed, I'm going to do the same process I did before. I'm going to do a frame around the outside and then um, kind of put it all over the place and then smooth it out with my hand.
So with this one, I'm not as worried about um, the resin going over the side because we made sure that the resins were covered on the first pass. On this one, I want more resin to sit on top and hopefully it's going to give us a really good smooth um, transition into the, to the edges. Now on the first coat, some of the edges did pull away. That's actually natural, even though we didn't use silicone or anything. And that's just gravity just kind of pulled those over. So now what we're doing is we're just going to go around and make sure that that resin grabbed all of the edges or all of the sides, I guess you could say. Well, maybe I guess there'll be edges. Now remember resin is self-leveling. So I'm just going to go around the edge and make sure it's grabbed on all places. And then very, very lightly, I'm trying, I'm not pushing the resin over the side. I'm just very gently smoothing it out. Like here I can see a, there we go. And when you're doing this, it really helps to have a light in front of you, um, whether it be a lamp or anything like that. Because what you can do is you can actually use the reflection of the light. You can get down low and use the reflection of the light. And that's going to tell you if you have any holidays or any of that kind of stuff. I don't see any, so I think we're good. So I'm just going to do one more smoothing pass. Very, very gently. Sorry about the dog in the background. The kids are riding their bikes down the street. And the dogs outside are barking, so the big guy inside is barking. Because this is our final coat, I am taking a little more time than I would that I did on the base coat because we want this one to be very, very smooth and level. All right, that is it. We are going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Down in the description below, you will find links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. I've spent most of the day today getting some vinyls um, patterns uh, formatted and ready to load to the website. So a whole bunch of new stuff should be coming soon. So go check that out. Also down in the description, all of the paint colors used is everything that you need to recreate this painting. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed day. Um, I will post the up close shots and the finished product at the end of this video, and it will be available on my website soon at guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. Everybody have a blessed day and God bless.